Okay, let's have a look at some simultaneous equations in modular arithmetic. So supposing I tell you that x is congruent to 1 mod 2, but it's also congruent to 2 mod 3. Can you think of any solutions? So I want a number such that if I divide it by 2, I get remainder 1. And if I divide it by 3, I get remainder 2. Can you think of any possibilities? Well, one way you could do this is you could start by thinking of all the numbers that satisfy the first one and seeing if there are any that satisfy the second one. So I could say, okay, here are, I could write out all my numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and so on. Now, let me mark above them all the ones that satisfy the first equation. So to be congruent to 1 mod 2, and here, 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 and so on. What about being congruent to 2 mod 3? I'm going to be here. And then where am I going to be? I'm going to be here. Oh, there's a solution. You see, it satisfies both the above and the below. But also, if I keep going, there'll be one here, and there'll be one here. So there's another solution there. 1, 2, 3. And in fact, if I draw in 17, I'll get another solution here as well. So where are the solutions? There's this one, there's this one, and there's this one. Let's try continuing a bit further. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. See if you can do this as well. 30. So I've got here, 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 here. And then I'm going to have this one, this one, this one, this one. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. This one. Can you see a pattern emerging? Where are all these solutions that I've got? So there's 5. And then how much further along is the next one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How much further along is the next one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How much further? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what we've got is a repeating pattern that repeats itself every six numbers. And oh look, 6 happens to be 2 times 3. And this makes sense, right? Because the top ones, the top solutions occur every two numbers. And the bottom ones occur every three numbers. So how often are they both going to occur at the same time? That's going to be every 6. So the solution to this is x is congruent to 5 mod 6. Because each of these, is, each of these circled solutions is congruent to 5 mod 6. So now let's see if we could do that with another one. So let's try getting rid of all this. Let's try doing x is congruent to 0 mod 2 and x is congruent to 1 mod 3. So see if you can do this one as well. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, So I want to be 0 mod 2, that's this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And I want to be 1 mod 3, so that's this one, this one, 
this one, that one. Uh, I want to be one and one, three. So it's this one, that one. One, two, three, one, two, three. So the solutions are here, 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 and so on. So again, they occur once every six, and it's going to be that they are all congruent to four mod six this time. So do you think that something like this is going to happen for every pair of numbers that I'm doing, mod 2 and mod 3? And the answer is yes. So if we just write down, if we just write down the remainders, mod 2 and mod 3, what do we get? So if we take all the numbers mod 6, Right. So what's the remainder if we do this mod 2 and if we do this mod 3? So here we get 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Right? And down here we get 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So now have a look at these pairs of numbers. How many different combinations of numbers are there? On the top line, you can be either a 0 or a 1, so there are two possibilities. On the bottom line, you can be either a 0, a 1, or a 2, so there are three possibilities. So for a pair of numbers, there are exactly six possibilities. And if you have a look, each possibility occurs exactly one time. So here's a 0 and a 0. Is there a 0 and a 0 anywhere else? No, there isn't. Here's a 1 and a 1. Is there a 1 and a 1 anywhere else? No. Here's a 0 and a 2. Is there a 0 and a 2 anywhere else? No. A 1 and a 0, there's no 1 and a 0 anywhere else. A 0 and a 1, there's no 0 and a 1 anywhere else. 1 and a 2, there's no 1 and a 2 anywhere else either. So if I tell you any pair of a top number and a bottom number, then you can immediately tell me what the number along here was. Right? So if I tell you that the top number is 0 and that the bottom number is 2, you can look along here and go, oh, well, in that case, I had to be in this column, and up here, I had to be 2. So what that was actually saying was, if I told you that x was congruent to 0, that x is congruent to 0, mod 2, and that x is congruent to 2, mod 3, You've got a 0 and a 2, so you look along here and you say, ah, oh, this is the mod 6 row, and you know that that implies that x had to be congruent to 2 mod 6. So that's quite a pretty pattern, right? And I hope that you can try investigating it with different numbers. I've done it mod 2 and 3 to give myself 2 times 3 is 6. So try doing it with some other numbers to see if it still works. And later on, we'll see that this is an example of something called, curiously, the Chinese remainder theorem. <laughs>